Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing landscape inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Everyone gather round. It's a time of day for Virtual Small Fry School. We can hardly wait. Make new ocean friends connect with old pals too. Let's learn about the sea. There's so much to do. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. Learn and have fun. Cool creatures to meet. It's virtual small fry school. Go ahead and grab a seat. Hi friends. Welcome back to virtual small fry school here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Rebecca and I'm so excited you're here with us today. So we will be hosting these live every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Alaska time right here on YouTube. And if you have any questions, please text the number in the description below. And we have a new friend with us today. Her name is Shauna, and she's helping us run the computer today. So for that reason, we are both wearing masks to stay safe. And we have other friends here too. I want to acknowledge that I live and work on the traditional homeland of the Aleutic Suksiak people, whose heritage and culture continue to enrich our communities. And I also want to thank Derek Shia and Gina Davidson at the Aleutic Museum um, for helping us out in this episode. So last week, we learned from Derek um, a little bit about the Aleutic people's heritage. So let's take a look at what he shared with us last week. Shamai, my name is Derek Shia. I work at the Aleutic Museum in Kodiak, Alaska. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Aleutic people of Alaska. The Aleutic people have lived in Alaska for over 7,000 years and live in three different parts of the state of Alaska. And that's Kodiak Island, the Prince William Sound, and the Alaska Peninsula. So a long time ago, the Aleutic people were uh, uh, semi-nomadic, which means that they traveled around and followed the food that they were gathering, uh, whether that was sea mammals or different animals they were hunting or uh, were different you know, the times when different plants were growing, people moved around. A little bit more recently, within the last couple hundred years, Aleutic people lived in big, large villages, primarily along rivers, um, when they were catching a lot of fish. And fish, uh, a long time ago and, and still today, is a very important food for Aleutic people and other people living on Kodiak Island and throughout the state of Alaska. And um, we also made masks. We made animal masks. So I want to share with you some of the photos and uh, fun work that my friends shared with us. Oh. We have sparrows. And we also have a seal and another sparrow. Thank you so much for sharing with us. So today, we're learning about the Aleutic language which is called Alutic. And to say hello in Alutic, we say Chamai. Can you say Chamai with me? Chamai. Let's say it together on the count of three. One, two, three. Chamai. So last week, we also learned that the Alutic people moved around a lot. Um, and in the summer, they traded with other native groups. So here, we can see that the other native groups that have their own heritage and culture, and they have their own language too. So if they all don't speak the same language, how are they going to talk to each other? Do you think they can? No. So what do you think they did? Hmm. Well, the Aleutic people learned the languages of the other native groups they were trading with. So they spoke so many languages. And during Western colonization, they learned Russian and English. So that's two new languages. Well, now during this time, uh, they were not allowed to speak Aleutic. And um, as time went on, 
the parents of some children decided that they were not going to teach Alutic to their children. And so um, nowadays, the people that speak Alutic, there's not that many of them. But the Alutic Museum and other people are working so hard to preserve the language. So I want to show you um, a really cool program that the Alutic Museum is uh, running. So if you go on their website and you go on Learn, you, they have the Alutic Word of the Week program where you can learn a new word every week with our friend Derek. And Derek was so kind to teach us a little bit about the Alutic language. And so he taught us how to say different animals in Alutic. So I want us to learn from Derek. I am also going to uh, teach you a little bit about the Alutic language and teach you some Alutic vocabulary words. So I've got a, a set of puppets right next to me of different animals, and I'll teach you how to say uh, these animals in the Alutic language. The first, a lot of people are familiar with this. This is a takukak. Takukak means bear in Alutic. And this here is a tunungak. Tunungak is a puffin in Alutic. And this here is achsuk. Achsuk is an orca or killer whale. And this little thing is a kalungak. Kalungak. Kalungak is the raven. Here we have a weenak. Weenak is a sea lion. This here is Izuik. Izuik is a seal. Izuik is my name in Alutic as well. So this is my namesake, Izuik. And lastly, we have a sapushkanak. Sapushkanak is a bird. Wow, Derek has a super cool name in Alutic, Izuik. So cool. And guess what? We have seals and sea lions here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. And we are going to learn about those later this month. Now we're gonna move on to our, acti our activity. And so we have, we're gonna be coloring today by numbers. So go ahead and get your uh, coloring sheet and we're gonna get started. Okay, so we're gonna count the numbers together. Um, this one looks a little dark, but we'll get there. Can you count with me? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine different numbers. And we also have different colors. Now friends, I wanna remind you, if you have any questions, feel free to send them now as we're doing our activity. So what color is this with the number one? It's orange, yeah. So you can get your markers or your crayons or your coloring pencils. I have colored pencils here. And let's go find the number one. <laughs> oh, I see it here. So I'm going to color that. Rebecca, why you uh, color? Do you want to answer some questions from our friends? Yeah. Um, do we have puffins at the center? Ooh, great question. Do we have puffins at the center? We do. We have the tufted puffins and we have horned puffins. Very good. And do those puffins have names? They do. Um, but I think Laura and Shauna, you guys can help me out because I I don't know their names very well. Oh yeah, and they're super hard because they all look super, super similar. Um, they look just like twins swimming out there. But what we do is our bird staff, the people that take care of those birds, they're able to um, know which ones are which um, by having some little um, bracelets on their legs. Uh, and that helps them be able to figure out which ones are which. But we have fun names like 
Sequoia and Bear and Kenai and Han Solo and Harriet. It's really fun to come up with new names for all of our new friends. Wow, really fun names. Yeah. I like Sequoia a lot. Great. So, what color is this for number two? It's red. Yeah. So go ahead and get your red color and let's find the, the number two. Okay. So I see a number two here and I see it here. So let's go ahead and start coloring that. Derek showed us some really cool animals and the way of um, how to pronounce them in Alutic. And some of them were really hard, but Izuik, that's a fun one. And the bear too, talk with cock, so cool. Oh, sorry friends, I saw, I saw the number two right here. So I went ahead and colored it red. Great, what's next? Three, yeah, which is black. Hmm. Let's see, I'm going to look in my little bin to see if I have black. If not, I might have to use a different color that's a little darker. I think I'm just going to use um, this color, as, sorry, this color as my black because I don't see black here. So let's find three. Oh, right here. Yeah, so this might show a little blue, but I'm so sorry. This is supposed to be my black. Rebecca, do you speak any other languages? Oh, do I speak any other lang languages? I do. I speak, um, so I speak English, and I also speak Spanish. And um, Spanish is really important to me because when I speak Spanish or when I, you know, watch movies in Spanish or read books in Spanish, number three, um, I feel connected to my, my culture and my heritage. And so um, I think it's great that the Aleutic Museum is preserving the Aleutic language so that they can continue the heritage and culture alive. Spanish is really fun. Do you speak other languages, Laura? I don't. I took Spanish in <laughs> high school, and so it's somewhere up in my brain. Um, and then I know a little bit of American Sign Language because I have several deaf friends, and so it's really great to be able to practice with them and see, uh, see how cool it is that you could talk with your hands. Yeah, that's really cool. We see another number three. I think we're good. What comes next after three? Four. Yeah. And four is what color? Yellow. Yeah. So I have my yellow pencil. I see the four here and four there. So let's go ahead and get started with these. We have another question, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. um, Elijah in Eagle River, who is also coloring along with you, and there's a great picture for you to see after you're all done. How many birds are in the exhibit right now? Oh my goodness, Elijah. That is a great question. And I think I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna ask the help of my friends. Yeah, so Elijah, there's about 70 birds in the, uh, aviary which is what they call their home um we just had two really cool duck species or duck birds introduced they're spectacled eiders spectacled like wearing eye uh, eyeglasses they're super fun and they're adapting or learning to live in their new home really really well um and rebecca naomi wanted you to uh, know that her brother is learning spanish that's awesome Buen trabajo. That's a good job. 
Okay, so we have glue for the number five. And I think that's going to be our ocean or the water. So let's go ahead and get coloring to that here. Yeah, I think languages are so fun. I like to, um, because then it opens the world to um, other people and you can communicate with other people and talk to them and learn about them and what they like to do for fun or their traditions. Wow, the puffins are really, really cool here. I like the horned puffin a lot because the little horn looks really cool on it. It looks almost like a painting. And I like to paint and color. Do you like to paint and color? My friends here, do you like to paint and color? Yeah, it's super fun to be able to just paint some pictures and color some great things and kind of just enjoy some quiet time sometimes. Yeah. Shauna, do you like to? I definitely like to paint. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I used to do that for a job. <gasps> Whoa, coloring as a job? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Whoa, I would like to color all day. But I like coloring here with you friends who join us at 11 a.m. every week on Tuesdays. Great. Okay, this number is six. What color is that? It's green. Yeah. So let's find all the six. Now, six is a little small, so if you can't see it, plants are usually what color? They're green, yeah. So um, all of our plants here have a tiny number six. You might be able to see it better on your paper, so we're gonna color our plants green. And again, friends, I want to remind you, if you have other questions, um, feel free to send them in. Rebecca? Yes. You said that you speak Spanish, yes. but do you also speak Aleutic? Oh, I do not speak Aleutic. I, I wish I could, but I don't. But you know, Derek has taught me a few words and I plan on um, looking at their program, the Aleutic Word of the Week, and learning how to say other things. Because um, I was looking at it and I, um, there's so many they have really cool ways to say like a song or baby or just words that we use every day or you know body parts or nose or eyes um, and so yeah it's I will say um, it is hard for me to pronounce a lot of those words because I am not a native Aleutic speaker but it is really fun to learn new languages okay so what's next seven yeah and that color is Gray. I see a seven here. Let's go ahead and color that. Do you friends watching have a favorite color? I can't remember if I've asked you that. I really like, um, Teal, so it's a, a kind of blue. Sometimes it looks a little green, or like a blue and green mixed together, and I think it's so pretty. 
Okay. And we have eight, which is white. Now, if you want to, you could leave it as is because the paper is white. But I do have my white colored pencil here, so I'm going to just color it for fun. And we also have to color its other little feathers, our puffin's feathers, by his feet. Great. Okay, our last color is brown, which is um, what comes after eight. Nine, yeah. So brown is the rest of this here. What is our friend the puffin standing on? Do you know? It's a rock, yeah. But some rocks can also come in like um, grays or browns, depending on how they were formed. Hey, Rebecca, mm -hmm. do puffins look like your coloring page all the time? Do they look like my coloring page all the time? No. Um, when they're born or when they hatch, they don't look like this at all. They look, um, actually, at the, at the beginning when we play one of the videos, um, the little bird that is eating the fish, that's a puffin. And that's, but I don't know what kind of, the, it's a puffin. And so they look like that. But this is the horned puffin. And the tufted puffin looks um, different than the horned puffin. He has um, little like feathers on its, on its eyes, or like on top of its eyes, kind of like that. It's really cool. And if you were to visit the Sea Life Center today, these, all of these puffins, our horned puffin friends and our tufted puffin friends, are in their winter plumage. And I know that's a really big word, but that just means their feathers look different. And they look very black or gray. And they're very, very, they're not as colorful as they are during the summer. You want to know a fun fact about the puffin, Rebecca? Yeah. They're called the clowns of the sea. <laughs> and a group of them sometimes is called a circus. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So silly. Do you think it's because that bright nose kind of looks like a clown nose? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> now, friends, I missed it, but the number two is actually down here, too. And that's red, and it goes all the way up here. So I'm going to quickly color that. Laura. Yes. You like birds. I do like birds. Do you have a favorite bird here at the Sea Life Center? Oh, at the Sea Life Center? Ooh, that's hard. I really like the horn puffins. Um, and I really like the tufted puffins. And I really like the spectacled <laughs> eiders. Um, but I also really love our mascot, Tuffy. I really like when they're able to join us as a special guest because they're that's super, funny. super fun. Yeah, I like Tuffy. I wonder if. Tuffy will have time to visit us this month. Ooh. I'll have to check their schedule. <laughs> okay, friends. So now. Oh, sorry, we have one more question. Yeah. Um, will we have small fry the week of Thanksgiving? Yes, so to, um, we will have small fry the week of Thanksgiving. Um, so that would be next week. And so next week, we're going to be talking about Aleutic plants or how the Aleutic people used plants. Um, for different foods and things like that. And we are going to be making a um, traditional Aleutic, dare I say, dessert. And so we are going to be needing berries, and we're going to need um, sugar and a little bit of milk. So that way you have time to prepare yourselves for, for next week because we're going to be making something. And so you might also need the help of your adult. Now during the week, you can also print this out, it's in the description below. And you can connect the dots. So they all have a number, let's see, but it's one, two, three, and it just keeps going. And so you connect the dots 
to get the fish, and then you can color it whatever you'd like. So you can do that during the week. And then you can send us photos to asktuffy at alaskaseelife.org. And all that information is in the description. So I'm pretty happy with my puffin. What about you? Great. So, whoa, friends. So thank you so much for joining us today. I was really excited to color a puffin with you. And I also want to say thank Derek and uh, Juna, the um, Alutic Museum, oh my goodness, at the Alutic Museum, and especially Derek for teaching us about um, a little bit about the Alutic language. It's really cool. And I want to thank Alaska 529 for sponsoring this episode. And as I said, next week we're going to be talking about Alutic, or how the Alutic people use plants. So you have time to prepare yourself for next week's activity. You'll need berries, you'll need um, a little bit of sugar and a little bit of milk. So those three things, and then potentially a fork, you know, in a bowl so that we can eat it and enjoy it. And so stick around for story time. Today's story time is Raven and the Tide Lady. It's really cool, it's beautiful, and it's um, a Tlingit story. So the Tlingit people are in Southeast Alaska. Um, so yeah, you might wanna look that up later, kind of like where Juneau area, Juneau, Alaska is. So yeah, stick around for story time and I will see you again next week at 11 a.m. Bye friends. Raven and the Tide Lady. Adapted from a traditional native story, illustrated by Michaela Goad. Raven and the Tide Lady. A little old lady controlled the tide. She never let the tide go down low. Raven was determined to bring back the low tide so foods could be gathered from the beach. Raven saw the tide lady sitting on the tide and began to think. What color is the raven? Black, good job. There are some purples in its wings and a little bit of blue. He went to the beach and walked along the bull kelp. He put his head in the water, trying to get a sea urchin, but he could not reach it. Then Raven saw mink. Mink, can you bring me a sea urchin? Asked Raven. Mink dived underwater and surfaced with a beautiful shell, round like a ball, but covered in small spikes. Raven ate the delicate meat of the urchin and drank its juice. Then he went to the tide lady who was sleeping by the fire and said, hey, look what I have. The Tide Lady was not happy to see Raven with a spiny shell. She asked Raven, when was the tide so low you could get a sea urchin? With a stick, she chased Raven away. Then the Tide Lady went back to sleep as the fire crackled and popped at her back. Raven returned and said, I'm chilled from the juice of the sea urchin. May I sit by the fire? No, Jook, get out of here. Please, I am chilled from the juice of the sea urchin. Please let me sit by the fire. The Tide Lady was angry. She did not understand how Raven had harvested the sea urchin. No, Jook, you cannot sit by the fire. She raised her stick again. Raven took the stick away. He began poking the Tide Lady with a spiny sea urchin shell until she hollered, stop now, Raven, let me go. Raven said, not until you let the tide go. Let it go back down. The tide lady relented. Okay, okay, Raven. I will let the tide down. But Raven held on to the tide lady and hollered, Where are you, Gidzinook? Gidzinook! 
Go down to check the tide. Gidzenook returned. Raven, the tide is as low as half a man. Raven called his crew. What do you see at the shore? We see gumboots in the tide pools, they hollered. Do you see the gumboot chitons? They're really small. There are a couple all within the rocks. What about the sea star? Can you count with me how many arms this sea star has? One, two, three, four, five. Good job. And now, called Raven, we can gather seaweed on the rocks. And now, called Raven, we can rake the sand for clams and cockles. And now, called Raven, we are picking sea urchins at the edge of the surf, the crew hollered. Raven called to Magpie, go down and check the tide. Magpie hollered, Raven, the entire beach is almost dry. I will drop a line for Gray Cod. So Raven let the Tide Lady go. Raven invited everyone to gather food. As Raven strung up, one, two, three, Gray Cod, he instructed the Tide Lady, from this day, the tide will come high up to the trees before going back down. The tide will stop in eight places when it is going down. This would help everyone. They could now predict the tide and know when to gather food. Now Raven was tired and hungry. He filled up on one cod stomach with seal grease, lay down and allowed the grease to drip into his mouth to reward his hard work. Mmm. The Tide Lady kept her promise and let the tide rise and fall. Today, when the tide is low, we can go down to the beach and gather clams, gumboots, sea urchins, seaweed, and much more. Thank you. 